I think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. First thing that I do is I line the bottom with a chicken food. You could also use oatmeal or you could use a bran of some sort. Pretty much anything that is edible to the roaches and something that is there. Now luckily the red runners don't actually like to dig very much. So the reason that we're gonna be lining the bottom with any sort of substrate really is so that any time that you either forget to feed them or you're just out of town or something like I am a lot for work, that's an unlimited food source for them. Roaches in the wild can survive for months off of literally one of these tiny crumbs. So this is just literally giving them an unlimited food source other than what we will be feeding them regularly. This is what I line on the bottom. You can use any kind of uh, substrate. I try to use anything organic, try to use something that's super healthy and hippy dippy and all that stuff. So this is just some really good organic chicken scratch. Now you get your egg crates. These are really good because it gives the roaches a lot of surface area to live in. It gives them a lot of hiding holes. You can use any kind of egg crates. These are literally just store-bought egg crates because I eat a lot of eggs, so I have a lot of egg crates lying around. Save up those for like a month and then you've got a bunch of free egg crates. Don't go and buy them on eBay or something. They're way more expensive than they're actually worth and it's just not worth it. Now we're gonna actually switch to the official tub that I have with my colony in it uh, right now. So this is my actual setup, and you're gonna notice a lot of things going on here. So let's go ahead and break it down. Inside here is quite literally a bajillion red runners. Here, I actually have a substrate. Originally it was chicken scratch, and then I had spare oatmeal, so then I put a bunch of more oatmeal on. I finally found a great use for Lugardi, and it's to feed the red runners. That's that purple powder you see right there. They actually eat that pretty well. And then I also like to always put the dried up old gecko dishes in there. So I figured that if you are feeding them uh, the dried up gecko food, you know, the geckos are gonna end up eating these roaches anyway. And now if you're gut loading them with something like gecko food, that seems like the perfect system and it's like zero waste. You're really putting everything to use. So that's a little life hack for you. Always feed your dried up gecko dishes to the roaches. They'll love it. So when it comes to feeding these red runners, it's pretty simple. All that you're gonna do is feed them fresh fruits and sometimes vegetables. Of course, you're gonna always wanna make sure that your source is organic. You don't want your bugs to be eating something that is full of pesticides that are made to kill bugs, and then in turn feeding those to your crested geckos. I always try to make sure that I'm feeding them very nutrient-dense fruits that are organic such as organic oranges. It actually stimulates their breeding even more so. So I always try to give them oranges a couple of times a week. They actually are some of the only roaches that'll eat bananas, so that's helpful. Other foods that I would recommend feeding them are things like cantaloupe and papaya because of their high natural calcium content and low phosphorus ratio. You guys can look into that further, but from my experience with keeping redfoot tortoises, that's some of the best fruit that you can ever feed an animal that can eat fruit. Now, red runners are not actually afraid of light. As you can see, they're openly moving around. I could even go ahead and shake them, or as soon as I put food on top of these, they'll all start emerging and start eating, even in broad daylight. I still like to keep them in the dark just so that they are more active, but they aren't necessarily like dubious and afraid of light. Now, when it comes to breeding red runners, in order to have the most optimum breeding, you want to have them sitting at around 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like... Uh, something in Celsius. When you have them at this temperature, their breeding is going to be absolutely prolific. Now, what's really interesting about red runners, as opposed to, let's say, hissing cockroaches or lobster roaches or dubia roaches, is that they actually will lay eggs. These eggs are called like oputhica or something. I don't know. Uthica. And they're really interesting because they will lay these eggs and within about a month or two, they will hatch. Each one of these forbidden chocolates has around 30 to 40 red runners in it. Absolutely crazy. And each one of your females will lay one to two of these a month. So that means if you had a colony of a thousand and you had 800 females and 200 males, your 800 females would be laying, I don't know how to do math. You can see why red runners can just be such a great source and a perfect replacement for crickets. Now, these red runners are actually illegal in some states. To my knowledge, it's only Florida. There's such a low likelihood of them really settling down and establishing themselves in your house. I've been accidentally finding a few here and there, and they're either on their back dead or they're just existing, and they're not at all like setting up a colony or setting up shop. These guys don't really have the ability to do that anywhere other than Florida. Now in the near future, I will have a website where I will be selling these Red Runners and that's gonna be robbiesredrunners.com. But up until then, 
DM me on Instagram at Robbie's Reptiles, or you can email me at Robbie's Reptiles at gmail.com and we can hash out the details. Prices may vary depending on my actual supply and what I'm willing to sell at the time. Right now, I only have babies available, but in the near future, I will have plenty to go around that I could even sell full-on starter colony packs. So if you guys are interested in that, either comment down below or go follow me on social media to stay updated with what I'm producing. Mm -hmm.